Hello and welcome to the What Northern Ireland Means to Me podcast, presented by me, Julia Paul. This series has been produced by Shared Future News to mark the centenary of Northern Ireland and is funded by the Heritage Fund on behalf of the Northern Ireland office. Shared Future News provides information and personal stories on the topics of peace building, reconciliation and diversity to a Northern Ireland audience and beyond. In this episode, Linda Irvine, the manager of the Turris Irish Language Project in East Belfast, tells us what Northern Ireland means to her. Well, it's home. I've never really travelled. I don't really know anywhere very well apart from Northern Ireland. And I don't think I'd like to live anywhere except Northern Ireland. And even within Northern Ireland, I couldn't imagine living anywhere but Belfast. It's where I was born and I hope it's where I'll die, but not too soon. (laughs) No matter where you are in Northern Ireland, you're never really far away from a city, from the country or the coast. So everything always feels very accessible in Northern Ireland and that's, to me, a great positive. But the complexity of Northern Ireland, well, yes, it is a very complex place. There are times I've felt it's very hard to live here, to be part of a society that is broken and doesn't appear to be getting fixed even 20 odd years after the Good Friday Agreement. It was part of a a cross-community women's group. And we did a six-week taster in the Irish language. I just took on to it. I don't know why. started going to classes because my husband, Brian, at that particular period was the leader of the Progressive Unionist Party. A local journalist caught on to the story. I mentioned East Belfast Mission because that's where I'd been introduced to the language. And they were then inundated by people asking them, could they go to this class, which had been a taster session six months before. So they approached me, we started up a class and that's what kicked it off and that was 10 years ago. I started to learn about the language and I felt a sense of loss almost that I'd never had the opportunity to to learn this language because of the tradition I came from and I wanted to share the joy of it with other people from within my community. But I also became more and more aware of the hostility towards the language from people within my own community. So another part of me wanted to defend the language. So it was a combination of both things that channeled me towards doing what I do. It's a really positive place to be and I've met so many great people. I have fantastic people around me who are as passionate about the language and as passionate about bringing people together as I am. I want to see change in Northern Ireland. I want to see an end to the flag-waving, green or orange tribalism. And I do think that that is slowly happening. I do think the middle ground is rising. But unfortunately, the two extremes seem to be shouting louder, even though they're getting smaller. And maybe it'll be a united Ireland, or maybe it'll still be a Northern Ireland. I don't lose much sleep over it, to be honest. A referendum will come one day, and people will vote. And I'm not really bothered one way or the other. I think the thing that would be an issue for me, it would be losing touch with the UK. I don't mind being part of United Ireland, but I don't want to be part of United Ireland that hates the UK. I would find that difficult. What Northern Ireland Means to Me is produced by Shared Future News. Our staff include Alan Leonard, Alan Mabin and Julia Paul. Our theme song is Figure in the Fog by Jordan McMurray, with thanks to Music Paths. This and other episodes with transcripts are available at the Shared Future News website, sharedfuture.news. You can also follow us on Facebook at Shared Future News and Twitter at Shared Future. If you would like to suggest someone for a future episode of What Northern Ireland Means to Me, please email us at editor at sharedfuture.news. Thanks for listening.